We're going to dedicate the Shul Lilu Nishma Devorah Feige Bat Shemuel. Hola Devorah Bat Shemuel. Esther Rivka Bat Avraham, Monica Bat Fani, Menachem Mendel Ben Elchanan. You know, there is a special segula, but I don't like the word segula because it's much stronger than that. We're talking about something that it's written down throughout years, hundreds of years. And it's something that if a person takes that concept to, to his life, automatically, whatever situation he will be holding, he will see Yeshua, he will see salvation. David Amelech says in Tehillim the following sentence, and all of us, we say it every single day. Listen up the word. Say David Amelech, Neranina Bishuatecha, Ufshem Elokenu Nidgol, Yemale Hashem. What is the translation? Neranina Bishuatecha. Let us uh, praise you. Yeah? Neranina Bishuatecha, throughout the salvation that you're giving. Ufshem Elokenu Nidgol, we're going to. Uh, 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 elevate the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yeah? Hashem Elokeinu Nidgol. Yemale Hashem kol mishalotecha. And God, He will fill up whatever your needs are. Seche Chamim, do you know what is this Pasuk coming to teach us? We don't even realize. The Pasuk is coming to tell us that there is something that if you do, automatically you're going to have salvation. What is it? Neranina bishu'atecha. Say thank you to whatever you have. Appreciate the good things that God is giving you. And then, Yemale Hashem kol mishalotecha. And then, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to fill you up all your needs. Meaning, David HaMelech already, in, back then in his life, he said, Rabotai, you want to feel the salvation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Appreciate it. Thank it. How, how a rabbi told me that he was in a place and uh, and uh, there was a man with his both of the uh, b- both of his kids. So he asked the father, hey, "I'm sorry, he asked the kids. Tell me something. If you're gonna go to your dad and you're gonna tell him, Daddy, I want a toy, and the dad buy, buys you the toy, and then again you complain, but Daddy, that's not the toy that I want, and I want a better one, and he gets you another one, and then you complain again." What is the automatic, automatic reaction of the father? Listen, Habib, you don't appreciate? No toy. <laughs> Give me back the toy. What if the kid doesn't get any toy? But the kid every morning when he wakes up, he goes to his father and tells him, Daddy, thank you for giving me those shoes and these clothings that I have. And thank you, to, uh, thank you to, by sending me to that school. I love the school. And thank you for the food that you're giving me. Ah, Daddy, I love you so much. Is the dad going to buy him a toy? Not only a toy. You know what's going to happen? When the buyer is going to go, when the daddy is going to go to the to the store, he's not going to look for a regular toy. He's going to look for the most huge. Yeah, expensive. Oh, you're being large. For the most expensive uh, 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 toy. To make his son more happy. Say David Amelech, Neranena Bishuatecha. When you're able to appreciate, then Yemale Hashem Kol Mishalotecha. Then Borel Ran is going to give you salvation. Let me tell you, there was a lady in Jerusalem, and it's amazing, we don't realize how big is HaKadosh Baruch Hu and how many, many hasadim Hashem gives to us. There was a lady in, in Jerusalem that she had to take her son to see a doctor. This lady, barely she had money. And in Israel, everybody moves with buses, right? She took a bus, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes uh, was the whole trip. But she realized that the bus is passing through certain neighborhoods and places that unfortunately there is many challenges regarding Shemirat Ha'inayim. Keep up the eyes clean. She was worried about her son. So the whole 
trip, she was uh, talking with her son, telling him all type of stories and things, you know, just to to uh, 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 distract him. They get to the doctor. They finish the doctor, and she says to herself, I don't want to go back, you know, with the bus, and again, the same uh, places. But I don't have enough money for a taxi. She had 20 shekel in her, in her bag. That's all what she got. Rabotai, she said, okay, I'm going to stop the first taxi. And uh, she says, hi, I need, to get, uh, I need to go to Geula. Geula is a certain neighborhood in, in Jerusalem. If you don't mind, if you can take me, I have only 20, do- uh, uh, 20 shekels. So the taxi driver laughed. With a smile, he tells her, listen, uh, lady, to get to Geula, it's 50 shekels. 20 shekels, you don't get even to the half of the way. She says, you know what, Let, let's do the following. I got, I'm going to enter to your uh, taxi. You put on the meter. And whenever it gets to 20 shekel, you turn me off. <laughs> All these balagan for what? Come on. What's going on with her? All these balagan just to, you know, so listen up what happened. <laughs> listen up what happened. So this lady, they get to the 20 shekels. The driver was a nicer driver. He realized that the lady, she had no money. She said, you know what, I'm going to try to go a little bit faster. Anyway, when they get to the 20 shekel, he decided to pull to the side. He's about to pull to the, to the side, and there is a police car behind, calling from the from the loudspeaker, saying, taxi, move on, move on. Well, move on. <laughs> what do you mean move on? I have to stop in the side. Move on! Fine, he moves on a little bit more. I don't know, after a few, he wants to put again to the side. The same uh, police officer, taxi, I told you to move on, yalla, go! I was like three times. He had to move on. Three times he had to move on. He was already, he was already not so far, but still, I mean, it's a, it's a taxi. It works for that. It's not a, you know. He says that he's nearby, and then he gets a, uh, from 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 the from the, uh, how's it called? From the dispatch. They said, I have somebody who needs a taxi in Geula and is going straight from Geula all the way up north to Nahariya. Whoever is the closest one, please say it right now. He was one minute away. He said, I'm taking it. He took her exactly to her home, was in the same place, and he was able to take this man all the way to Nahariya. He did whatever, in one trip, he covered the whole entire week or more. You see? says, Sometimes we have no idea. What is a misirut nefesh? What a kadosh baruch Do you think that is limited? Sometimes we think that. Sometimes we think, ah, it's impossible. It's impossible. The answer is, when we trust on a kadosh baruch that he can do whatever it is, with 20 shekel you can get to geula also. Don't worry. For Baruch Olaim, it's not a big deal. So a man came up to me last night, and I told him, no, how are you doing? He told me, ah, Nisim Veniflaot. He says, Nisim Veniflaot, that's something good. He says, yeah, you know, every time that I pray, I get uh, more power, especially in the first Berachot. Why in the first Berachot? When I said, Kone hakol vezuchera hazde avot. I get such a hizuk, I love it. So what a hizuk? He says, you know what that means, Kone hakol? Konei HaKod is that Borei Olam acquires everything. Everything that is in this world belongs to Borei Olam. So if HaKadosh Baruch Hu have everything under his hands, I'm not going to trust him that in one second he can move things from one side to another. Rabotai, this week's parasha, we have Yosef at Tzadik. And Yosef is being thrown to the pit. Right? Why it was thrown to the pit? Was the idea of who? 
What was the idea of Reuven? Right? Reuven said, why we have to kill him? For one, we should kill him and to cover his blood. Yeah? Let's put it over here in the pit. And that's it. And say, Chachamim, that then they sell it to the Shema'irim. And Reuven comes back. And the Mephashim are asking, where was the Reuven all this time? Anyway, Reuven comes back. He sees the brother is not here. He reaps out his clothing. And the whole drama started. Rashi on the spot says, The pit was empty, no water in, in, in it. Says Rashi, there is no water. Or when there is no water, there is something else. What it was in the pit? Scorpions and snakes. And all the Mephashim are asking, well, one second, Reuven. You want to save up your brother, not to kill him. So where you put him? In a pit with, uh, in a, in a pit with uh, snakes? That's saving the life of your brother? You're killing him. You're killing him. There's many answers. There is, by the way, a very nice answer of the Orachayim Kadosh. Interesting concept. Says so the Orachayim Kadosh, very famous one. He says that in the world, the only one that has the power of free choice is a human being. All the rest of the world doesn't work with free choice. It's, it's already predetermined. Reuven said, if, let's write, if, if Borei Olam wants to take out Yosef from this world, if we kill him, it's our free choice. If I put it in a pit, it's going to depend. If the scorpions are going to arrive and they're going to kill him, that's a... Oh, so you asked him a very good question. He says, but who is putting it inside the pit? Obviously, obviously it was Reuven. So it's also the free choice. So you're right. But in the level, there was a whole issue with Yosef, if really was deserving Mita or not. Say that when Yosef came, when Yosef came, they judge him. They judge him. And who they put to judge together with them? Look at the Mephashim, the Shekhinah. Borei Olam himself was called up to judge Yosef. Why was called up to judge Yosef? Because it was a whole she'ela. Yosef was speaking bad about his brothers in front of his dad. Correct? And by speaking bad, Bar Minan, Yaakov Avinu was able to throw them all, all of them out. And to throw them like, like Abraham did, Avinu did with Ishmael, and like Yitzhak did with Isaac. And there was a question, a lucky question, if Yosef at Tzaddik was deserving death. That's simple. Huh? So, they decided that he deserved it. By making a bedin, they decided that Yosef at Tzaddik deserved it. So, says Reuven, at least we're not going to kill him straight. We have to see if there is really a hundred percent uh, 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 accept it or not. Anyway, that's what the Orachayim HaKadosh writes. But there is another explanation. And this is more for us. And Ma'im in the Torah. The water represents the Torah learning. Says the Navi. Whoever is thirsty should drink water. We're talking about whoever his Neshama is thirsty. The only way to fill it up is throughout the learning of Torah. You can find some Jews, some people, or sometimes even in ourselves, that we feel empty. There is no water. If there is no water, there is something else instead. There are snakes. You know who is representing, who is the one that represents the snake? Who is this Nahash? The Yetzirah, the Satan is the same one. If you think that you find, you know, I'm not learning Torah, and I'm not, but I'm good. I'm coming to Shulis, you know, I put on tefillin. If there is no Torah learning in your life, the pit is empty. And if the pit is empty, Yetzirah can do whatever he wants with you. So I was teaching last night, beautiful, beautiful concept. There is a Gemara in Masechet Berachot. The Gemara writes, famous Gemara. If the Yetzirah comes up to you and he wants to attack you in something, let's say you're having a certain desire right now, and it's too big. 
to be the Yitzhana is thanking you. What should you do? It says the Gemara, three steps. Step number one, step number one, Ya Asok Torah. You should learn the Torah. If it works, beauty. If it didn't work, you should say the Shema. If it works, beauty. If it didn't work, remember the day of death. So one of the boys that was uh, last night in the shiur, he asked me a very obvious question. He says, Rabbi, if the day of death is the most powerful thing to attack the Yitzhara, so why I have to pass through learning Torah and Shema? Remember the day of death, straight up. So I saw one time a Hidush that says like this. Rabotai, the Yitzhara have three main things that he attacks us. There is desires, ta'ava, there is kina, jealousy, and there is kavod. Right? A kina, ta'ava, ve'a kavod, motzim et adam in ha'olam. Jealousy, pride, and desires. All of these three things that the Gemara mentions is not if you did the first one and it didn't work, do the second one because the first one didn't, didn't work for you. No. Each one of them is coming to cover one of the points of the Yetzirah. As an example, pride. What is going to help us against the pride? What is going to help us against the pride? To be humble. How I can be humble? Keriyat Shema. What is Shema? To accept that there is an authority above me. That I'm not the master of the world and I'm not controlling everything and whatever I want I'm going to get. No. We have somebody on top of us. That automatically, by having that in mind, I'm reducing my pride. Number two, jealousy. How a person is controlling his jealousy? Remember the day of death. Over there, everybody's going to be on the, same, uh, on the same spot. doesn't matter how much money you had in your back in cattle or, how, or, or why not. All of them, uh, after 120. And the last one, ta'ava desires. Torah controls ta'ava, the desire. Why the Torah controls ta'ava? Because what is the desire? I want something and I'm going to get it. Says the Torah, no, I want you to learn that there are limits in life. There is halach, there is halachot, mitzvot, etc. So I said the following concept. Listen up, this is beautiful. We have three things that are taking out the person from the world, and there are three things that maintain the world. Al Torah, al ha'avoda, ve'al gemilut chasadim. Correct? Torah is against, to help us from the desire. Avoda. To have Bore Olam in front of my eyes is going to help me for the pride. And Gemilut Hasadim to give to others, not to be jealous, to take all the time for you. And then I said, that's exactly the Beracha of Elokeh Avraham and Yitzhak and Yaakov. Abraham represents Emuna, that it's against the pride. Yitzhak represents Korban. I'm analyzing, my, I annul myself. I have nothing for myself that this is against the jealousy. And Yaakov represents Torah. Ishtam Yoshev Ohanim. Say, Chachamim, once you try to, to get in your life these three points, automatically you're going to control your Yetzirah. But if not, if there is missing Torah, automatically there is no Torah, there is scorpions and snakes. There is basically the Yetzirah that attacks us constantly. Baruch Amen ve